Ah, uh, but yes, my story. So, before we get into the story, we have to learn what the Order of Australia is. I'm going to explain this because I had no idea what this was. Apparently, there's like an Order of Great Britain, but you know, a lot of people don't know what that is either. So, the Order of Australia are these awards that recognize people for outstanding service or exceptional achievement, and there are four levels of this order. There's the Medal of the Order of Australia, OAM, for service worthy of particular recognition. There's the Member of the Order of Australia, A, uh, yeah, Member of the Order of Australia, AM, for service in a particular locality or field of activity to a particular group. There's Officer of the Order of Australia for distinguished service of a high degree to Australia or to humanity at large. And there's Companion of the Order of Australia for eminent achievement and merit of the highest degree in service to Australia or to humanity at large. Uh, and now we need to ask, who is Margaret Court? Uh, a lot of people do not seem to know. So basically, Margaret Court is arguably the greatest female tennis player of all time. Uh, she's also a Pentecostal minister uh, at a church, which is uh, in Perth. I'm not sure how to feel about that. She's she's only in Osborne Park. She's technically in cycling distance from me. Uh, and she's also kind of a terrible person. Uh, she publicly opposes uh, same-sex marriage. She was very vocal speaking up against the plebiscite back in 2017. And in fact, if you go to my channel, uh, don't do this because these are bad videos. But if you were to go to my channel, uh, my earliest three videos are talking about the plebiscite and I talk about her in that. And I talk about the colossal tantrums she threw over being criticized over her views on that. Uh, part of that was she boycotted Qantas when they said they would support same-sex marriage during that whole thing. Uh, one of the things she did, this is just oh, so beyond the pale. She wrote uh, in a newspaper, she paid to have this put in a newspaper, a short article where she um, decried the birth of a fellow tennis player's child because her partner is a, a woman. And um, you know, she said, oh, this child is being deprived of his father. And she said, oh, I have nothing against uh, this player and her partner with partner in air quotes. Uh, like just viciously attacking this person's personal life when she, she had no right to even be speaking on it. Uh, and because this is the trans agenda, of course, she's condemned uh, trans people. She's condemned trans athletes. The usual lines of trans women are a threat to women's sports uh, said that uh, I think like trans children are of the devil or, uh, you know, Something to that effect. She said that LGBTIQ inclusive education is of the devil. Uh, and throughout all of this, every single time people have tried to hold her accountable or you know, even criticize her a little bit, she's argued that this should not affect her tennis. Her views should not affect her tennis. Uh, leave my tennis out of this. Even after her publicly degrading a fellow tennis player. Uh, and she's basically responded to any and all criticism as, uh, you know, hateful, intolerant bully. Uh, so, you know, in short, she's just this evil, hateful, disgusting woman. And this also pisses me off, uh, just specifically um, the, the way she treated her fellow player. Because uh, as an Australian kid, one thing I was taught a lot in sports was this concept of uh, sportsmanship. Uh, I think we all learn a bit about sportsmanship, you know, don't be a sore loser, don't be a sore winner. But I feel like there's this culture of um, keeping personal issues out of the game. Even if you don't like someone, you should be able to play respectfully and fairly with them. Uh, and that has its problems, you know, that can be abused to make you put up with abusers and stuff. But I do think that there is some good in that. There's something admirable about really disliking someone, but still being able to treat them with respect. But the key word there is respect. And going and taking out a section in the paper to criticize someone's personal life, to 
to basically shit on the birth of their kid and their relationship, that is not respectful. And you know what else it isn't? And this is a huge part of sportsmanship, is inclusivity. Uh, so she's expecting this sportsmanlike behavior of uh, keeping issues with her views out of the tennis and respecting her tennis. But she will not in turn give that same sportsmanlike behavior of treating people with respect and respecting their personal lives because that is, you know, when her entire relationship with this person is just on the tennis screen. It's, it really annoys me as an, I'm not very much into sports. I have a lot of criticisms of Australian culture, but just the hypocrisy in that one bit of our culture really pisses me off. That's how it always uh, but is. yes, it's the same as like the mm. whole censorship. You know, I can say whatever the fuck I want, but the moment you say something back, that's censorship. Oh, yeah, she literally did that. Oh. Um, she had this interview where she said all these things, and the second she <clears throat> someone clapped back against her for all these bigoted things, oh, you're being intolerant, you're bullying me, and like she would not get let them get in words in edgewise. Uh, she complains about being censored when she got to speak for like five minutes, and the other four people on the show got a combined like one minute to speak. It, it she's not subtle basically but yes uh margaret court what happens uh the other day on um january 26th invasion day or as it's known officially uh australia day uh she was given an order of a Austra- uh, companion of the order of australia Award for eminent service to tennis as an internationally acclaimed player and record holding grand slam champion and as a mentor of young sports person. So not only was she given this award, but she was given the highest level of this award. And, uh, you know, right off the bat, or <clears throat> right off the racket, you might say, uh, you might think that uh, it might be valid to criticize this um, mentor to young sports person's bit, as of course, you cannot be a proper mentor to someone if you are a bigot. She cannot be a mentor to queer sports people, therefore, and she cannot, tr- uh, teach non-queer sports people to treat queer people with respect. Therefore, she cannot be a mentor. Uh, But she was awarded for that, so that's lovely. But, you know, everything about this is wrong, uh, which is probably why Dr. Clara Tuck Meng Su, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, uh, returned her own Medal of the Order of Australia in protest, which she earned for service as a medical practitioner to LGBTIQ plus and HIV positive communities in the Australian Capital Territory. Uh, now, Dr. Sue is specifically a transgender woman who lived much of her adult life as a gay man. Uh, and of course she works with these communities. So she has a unique understanding of just how hurtful and harmful um, Margaret Court's rhetoric is. And she put out a piece where she argued for why Court should be stripped of her award. Uh, she said that court is selective about which parts of the Bible she believes, which half of the course really, um, says that she uses the Bible to argue for views with uh, no biblical basis. For example, she uh, court says uh, against trans people, she says, <clears throat> God made them male and female. And that there uh, may be an argument against, against a lot of non-binary people, but I, uh, I happen to be male, so... You know, the Bible doesn't say anything against me, does it, Margaret? Because I'm male, and God made them male and female. Uh, Dr. Sue argued that she's not a role model for Australians, which absolutely true. Uh, we'll expand on that later. And also that she's harming Australians with her beliefs. Um, brilliant piece. I have it linked in the document if you want to read it. Uh, and Kerry O'Brien, uh, who is a veteran journalist and former ABC Current Affairs host, also turned down an offer to be given uh, Officer of the Order of Australia in solidarity with Dr. Sue. Uh, And as in general, there has been widespread backlash and criticism, uh, which is consistent with how Australia tends to respond to these. Uh, You know, our World Rugby story, uh, the one I did on Basil Zemplis, and later today we have a story from Queensland, which all show that Australians tend to stand with trans people, uh, just the same way we stood with gay and bisexual people back in 2017. Uh, And despite all of this, court has refused to return her award. 
Now she doesn't really make a clear argument as to why. That's just how she is. She never. She's not a very good speaker. She doesn't state things clearly. Uh, but she seems to be saying that uh, she should have the award because she loved representing Australia. And um, you know that's nice. That's nice that you loved uh, representing Australia, Margaret. But uh, you didn't. We all hate you. We all hate you and think you're terrible. And your beliefs are not consistent with the majority of Australia. So uh, you didn't really do that, did you? <laughs> uh, but she also argued that her uh, she previously was granted Officer of the Order of Australia. And she argued that this was in service to her community in like some sort of food drive or something. She wasn't specific. Uh, and that she was long overdue for being awarded for her tents. Now this, I did some digging, and I learned that this is actually a lie. Her Officer of the Order of Australia was awarded uh, partly because of that service to the community, but also for her achievements in tents. And I've linked extracts of all of her awards, so you can read this. It was also for the tents. She was also given two other awards previously, a Centenary Medal and an Australian Sports Medal, recognizing her tents. Uh, and her, a Companion of the Order of Australia extract that she just got also includes this entire list of like six or seven different things recognizing her for her tennis. Her tennis has been recognized to hell and back. The idea that this award is the only thing recognizing it is just her spinning a victim narrative. Oh, look at me. I, despite this great achievement, I'm being ignored, I'm being silenced because people disagree with my views. I'm so downtrodden. No, she was, she has been widely recognized. It's at the point where people like hate her so much that they're not celebrating her achievements. However, they're still recognizing them because it is still a fact that she is arguably the best tennis player, uh, woman tennis player in the entire world. So she's being recognized. We just don't like her when we do it. Uh, and while no one is talking about the cent uh, Centenary Medal and the Australian Sports Medal, uh, or the list in the extract, someone did point out that her uh, Officer of the Order Australia, uh, since that recognized her tennis, the fact she's being upgraded may actually be for reasons aside from her tennis. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much there is to that, but that is something that someone has uh, put forward. I sense you want to say something, I thought. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I, I literally, like, you're covering it very well, and I'm just kind of... Oh, sorry. I, I thought I heard you taking a breath <clears throat> trying to say something. Uh, okay, so when I saw this story, I initially thought this was just, you know, yeah, despite Australia being very queer-friendly, we have a very conservative government for some fucking reason. I don't get it. It's annoying. I thought, you know, this is just the liberals being bigots like they always are. I actually found out that the Australian honor system is independent from the government. Uh, and I actually found this out because actual white supremacist collaborator, Scott Morrison, is so desperate to distance himself from this. It's just that unpopular that he keeps going on about how this has nothing to do with him and it's a separate system and he doesn't know anything about it and just leave him alone. So it's I find that funny. This is so unpopular that he thinks he can get away with collaborating with white supremacists, but not with uh, giving Margaret Court a medal, uh, which really says more about our white supremacy problems, but uh, I digress. Um, I also found out in my research that not only Labour MPs, but also Liberal MPs want to change this honour system. Uh, and this has been sparked because of Court's award, but like there have been long-standing problems with racist and sexist biases, um, you know, a lack of First Nations people, lack of uh, women, women getting lower awards even when they do get awards. And so because of this and also court's award, people have been saying the system doesn't work. We need to look into why it doesn't work and change it. It's not never worked the way it's meant to. So basically, uh, the people don't want this. We're really mad about the government doesn't want this. They're not so much a fan uh, of how angry people are about this. And yet here we are stuck with this horrible decision that no one likes, not even actual white supremacist collaborator Scott Morris. And it got me wondering why, if no one wants this, why is it happening? 
why isn't anyone stopping this from happening? We're all really upset. And I, I can't give you any answers on that, I'm afraid, because um, there's no information on how the process works. It's mm -hmm. all shrouded in mystery. But I do think it speaks to uh, not only the immense power of systemic issues, but just how difficult they are to change and challenge, even when we're all on board, even when we all agree. There are so many problems in the world, uh, especially with transphobia, where the majority of people are against this and think it's just terrible and don't want it to happen. And yet it happens anyway, and it doesn't seem there's anything we can do about it. And it seems to go back to systems that were laid down many, many years ago uh, that have been chugging on for a long time that we just cannot uh, figure out how to change because of how insidious they are. It is, yeah. It's one of those absurd situations where, yeah. At least it's only a medal this time. Okay, uh, I really do not have anything to add to that, so shall we just continue soldiering? Hey, forward? I got to... I got to monopolize some time. <laughs> it's, it's a big help to have you, you know, uh, talking about things. Aww. And... <sighs> oh, you said a nice thing about me. Yeah, I did. I'll have to take it back later. 